Welcome back everyone to question two of this series. We ended off with the following question, which reads, how many kilojoules are released when 75.0 grams of steam at 100 degrees Celsius condenses, cools to zero degrees, and freezes at zero degrees Celsius? To do this problem effectively, we'll need a constant which is actually not shown here. The constant is the heat of vaporization constant, where one gram of H2O from gas to liquid is equal to 2,260 joules. So we'll need this constant to tell us how much energy is required first to make the steam go to liquid form. We'll also need to use this number to tell us how much energy is required to take 75.0 grams of steam from 100 degrees to zero degrees, and then we'll need to find out how much energy is required to freeze it. So there are three calculations, the first being the heat of vaporization. So I'll take 75.0 grams of steam and multiply that to this conversion ratio. I'll make sure that this number is at the top in the numerator, and at the bottom we have one gram. This unit and this unit will cancel out, giving us the amount of joules required simply to go from steam to liquid. Using our calculator, 75.0 times 2260. We get 169,500, and that's in joules, so I'll make that into kilojoules by dividing by 1,000, and we get 169.5. 169.5, this should be to three significant figures, so I'll just place a dot underneath the last significant digit. That's in kilojoules. That's our first of three calculations. The next calculation is to find out the amount of energy required to go from 100 degrees to zero. And for that, we'll use the specific heat capacity of water. Let me show you. We have 75.0 grams. And if I multiply this to this number, 4.184 joules per gram times degrees Celsius, this unit and this unit will cancel out, leaving us with joules over degrees Celsius. Now we want the amount of energy, so we're going from 100 degrees to zero. So I'll multiply this by 100 degrees, and that's degrees Celsius. This will cancel out with that, and this is being multiplied. So let's go ahead and find out what this is. 75.0 times 4.184 times 100, and we get 31380 joules. We'll divide this by a thousand to get kilojoules. And that's how many kilojoules? 31.38. 31.38 kilojoules of energy. We need this to three significant figures, so I'll just place a dot for now. And our third calculation will be the amount of energy to go from liquid state to solid state. We'll be using this conversion ratio. We have 75.0 grams times that conversion ratio is 334 joules at the top per one gram of water at the bottom. This will cancel out with that. And using our calculator once more, 75.0 times 334, and that gives us 25050. 25050, we'll divide this by 1,000 just like how we did with the others. 25.05. And now we get to add. So before we do that, let's find the significant figures. This number rounds to 170. This number rounds to 31.4. And this number rounds to 25.1. If we add these up, we get 170 plus 31.4 plus 25.1. And when it comes to adding, what dictates the number after the decimal place is the number with the least numbers of digits after the decimal place, which happens to be this one. It has no numbers after the decimal place. So neither should this. We should end up with 226.5. This five is followed by nothing, and the first kept digit is a six, which is even, so you don't push the six up to seven. That's one of the rules that we know. We have 226 kilojoules of energy. And there you have it. That is how to combine heat calculations.